that you would undergird him with your strength, Lord God. Oh God, that you would revive and refresh and give him a new rhema word for your people on today, Lord God. Lord Jesus, and when the word comes forth, let's grab a hold of it today, oh God, that we will not let it fall on stony ground, but it will drop in firm soil, Lord God. Lord, we bless you today. We thank you for all that you would do. Lord, we thank you for our hearts and minds, oh God. Oh, we purpose that they are in the right place to receive from you today, God. That we will not leave here as we came, oh God. That we will not leave here as we came, Jesus. Oh, we come today for renewal, oh God. We come to be revived, Lord Jesus. And we accept you by the Holy Spirit, oh God. We can't do anything without you, Lord Jesus. We can't do anything without you, so we trust in you. We rest in you today, oh God. Only you can fix it, Jesus. Oh God, we don't worry about anything, but we cast all our cares on you. The word says that you care for us, oh God. And so we bless you, Jesus. Thank you for caring for us, oh God. Thank you that we are a blessed people, oh God. Thank you that we are accepted into the beloved, oh God. Thank you, oh God, before the world was made, Lord Jesus, that you had plans for us, oh God. That you've accepted us, oh God, that we are the seed of Abraham, Lord Jesus. And we bless your name today, God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you, and we bless your Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We pull aside every, they pull down every contrary spirit, oh God. We pull down every contrary spirit, Jesus. We are free to worship you in spirit and in truth, Lord Jesus. And we bless your mighty name, O oh God. Lord, we come against disturbance and disservice today, Lord Jesus. Oh, we come against that mind-bending spirit, O oh God. Hallelujah, Lord, we bless you on today, Jesus. Oh, God, we come against schisms in, in the body of Christ, Lord Jesus, that we will work together in the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. We will be as one in our minds, oh, God. Thank you, Jesus. We will be as one in the vision for this church, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that's spoken over this church shall come to pass, oh God. We bless your mighty name that you will raise up the men and women church to do what we are called to do, Lord Jesus. Today is a new day that we will give of our time. We will give of our, our substance, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus, for all that you've said over us, oh God. Thank you for reminding us, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God, for reminding us, Father God, and we purpose, oh God, to do that which you've called us to do. And so we bless you today, and we ask you again to anoint every voice, oh God, every instrument, Lord Jesus. Bless us again, Lord Jesus. Oh God, we turn this place into, over into your hands, oh God. Do what you will do, God. We are receptive of whatever you want to do today, Lord Jesus. Thank you, 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 God, that your promises are yes and amen. Oh, God, we bless you this morning. We thank you for everything, 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 God. We take nothing for granted, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the breath that you've given us this morning. We bless you, Jesus. We thank you and we clap our hands of praise, God. Thank you, Jesus. All over the building, let's give him a hand of praise. Hallelujah. We ask your blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen. We bless you this morning. Hallelujah. Let's bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Let's bless him today. Hallelujah. Yes, bless him because he is worthy to be praised. Let's bless him this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He's worthy. Can we clap those hands and accompany that with a shout of praise? Accompany that with a shout of praise. If you know the reason you came into the house of the Lord was to meet with the king, open up your mouth and bless him because he inhabits our praise. We give you glory, God. We give you glory, Jesus. We give you glory, Jesus. And we say you be lifted up in this place. You be exalted in this place above our thoughts, above our feelings. We make this about you, Father. We set our affections on you. We fix our eyes on you. Arise, O oh God. Arise, 
We make that a prayer. Sing, arise, O God. Arise, O God. Arise, our King. Arise, our King. We sing, arise and take. Arise and take. Can you just lift your hands and lift him up? Sing around.
believe he's worthy of celebration this morning. Let's honor his majesty. We welcomed him in and he's here now. What will you do in the presence of the mighty God, the King of glory, the one to whom no one can compare? We've come to bless him this morning, so keep putting those hands together. Woo! Oh, we could put some more energy on that.
with a sober mind. I want you to hear yourself say, my God is a mighty God. My God is a victorious God. He never ever loses and he reigns above all things. At the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee bows because my God is mighty. He's all powerful, all powerful, all powerful and glorious. You're mine. You're
Clap your hands for the mighty God who stands in this room and sits on our praise. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. You could bless him a bit better than that. You could glorify him a bit louder than that. Your mighty God.
your praise. We know it's something that has to come out of our mouths. We give you praise. Oh, praise, oh, praise. Oh. And we praise the mighty God. We serve. Heaven and earth adore. We lift our praise to the one. We adore the one we love so. Sing heaven and earth adore. We adore you, God. We pour our do what we say and adore the mighty God and adore the King of Kings and adore the Lord of Lords, the lover of our souls, our keeper, our protector. Can we just adore him? Hallelujah. We let our praise rise to your ears, Father, as a sweet smelling sea. Hallelujah. 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 Don't stop praising him. Don't stop adoring him in the way that only you can for your God. Hallelujah. We bless your name, oh God. We lift you up, sold you up. Yeah. For 30 more seconds, can we just adore the Lord and let our praise rise to his ears? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Lift your praise above what you're thinking and what you're feeling and the limitations you usually put yourself on yourself when you're in praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Somebody say that. All I For you to, to be, be glorified, glorified, you to be lifted high, all I want, yes sir, is for you, you to be glorified. Say that. Feel my Put a punch on it for me. Punch it for me. Say feel my
one more time, all I want. All I want is Can we extend our hands and serve again? Father, we bless your wonderful name today. Thank you, God, for being in our midst. Thank you for your power and presence that's revealed among us. Thank you for your promises that are true and sure. We can rest comfortably on every promise that you have made to us. Thank you for loving us with a never-ending love, with an undying love, an amazing love. Thank you, Father. We are baffled, God, that you would love us. And the psalmist says, as we consider the heavens and the work of your hands, we cry out with him and saying, What is man that thou art mindful? Or the son of man that you would even consider us. Thank you, Father. 
that your mind is on us. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Now, God, we ask you to make yourself big in this house today. Send that anointing now, Father. That will cause deliverance to manifest. Send that anointing, O God. That will cause addictions to be broken. Hallelujah. Send that anointing that causes strongholds to come down. Send Send that anointing that ministers peace to your people. For those that are in a broken place, a dis depressed and distressed place, send that anointing, Father. Let your glory fill the house. That where no man or woman touch them, let your presence so saturate their lives that peace be ministered unto them in the name of Jesus. Father, we understand that the word that I'm declaring, preparing to preach may not be what they need. So God, we don't just ask for the word from Denzel. We need a word from you. We need glory to manifest. And we understand if your glory fills the house, every need will be met. Everyone in this place will be met at the point of their need. So we say, arise, O God, let your enemy be scattered. It's coming. Glory to God. Let your presence is coming. I'm telling you, let your presence. Let your presence. I'm telling you, it's coming. Let your presence. Let your I feel it. I feel it well enough. Let your presence, God, saturate this house. That the believer and the unbeliever alike will be able to declare that surely the Lord was with us in this place, God. We pray for that anointing to cause the one that's not saved to say, to cry out to you. That tangible presence of God that erases doubt. Glory to God. Glory to God. I thank you, God, that death sentences are lifted now in the name of Jesus. I pray for daughters in this room now. God knows what you need. I pray for daughters and sons. Glory to God. See one in particular that's been struggling with a, an abortion that they had. But oh Father, embrace that daughter now. Embrace her now. Let her experience your love in its fullness. Know that there is no condemnation on her as she determines to walk after the Spirit. I praise your name now that guilt is being lifted from her shoulders right now. She's been free. She's been forgiven. She asks for forgiveness and God, I pray that she has now the faith to receive that forgiveness. And I bind every demon that's been whispering in her ear right now in the name of Jesus. It's trying to tie her up in guilt and depression. I command freedom over her now in the name of Jesus. And God, we praise your name that she is now rid from the spirit of death. Glory to God. That blood guilt is removed from her hands now in the name of Jesus. Any man be in Christ, they are new creatures. Old things passed away and all things are made new. So I thank you, God, for a cleansing and a washing now in the name of Jesus. That daughter can't raise a hand because she don't want to be identified, but I need us to shout for her right now. God is breaking something. God is breaking something. Glory to God. Now God, break every fetter. Break every chain and set her free. In the name of Jesus. That inflammation in the throat now, I command healing in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to the pain when you swallow, I command healing for you. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. That pain in the side, on the right side, around your rib cage, I command now healing in the name of Jesus. 
not for the pain to stop but for the whatever the cause is to be corrected in the name of Jesus hallelujah be to God glory to God I command knees now to be made whole I thank you God for that urinary infection being healed in the name of Jesus bladders being rebuilt now in the name of Jesus <laughs> new kidneys being breathed now need birth now in the name of Jesus not by might nor by power but by his spirit glory to God shoulders healed in the name of Jesus I hear you father glory to God I command that air infection now to go in the name of Jesus someone has a swelling in your ear glory to God there's a swelling there where one of your one of your ears is actually shut you can barely hear through that ear be open now in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. This sound crazy. We're about to shout together. When we shout this time, that person's ears are going to pop open in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Come on, everybody, shout one more time. Come on, shout, shout, shout. Glory to God. somebody else when you breathe in deeply there's a pain in your chest when you breathe in deeply glory to God I know who that is but you breathe in deeply there's a pain right here in your chest I command now the healing virtue that is made available and promised to us now to be released in this house hallelujah glory to God Whatever was causing that, whatever infection, information existed, your chest cavity and your lungs, I command now healing to be released in the name of Jesus. Not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. Not that Denzel be glorified, but that God get all the glory. Now for all these conditions that we just called out, Father, I thank you that you would not show it to us if you didn't have intention to heal it. Now, Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We speak to every spirit of infirmity, send you back to the very pits of hell from whence you came. You will not make a mockery of the people of God, nor the man of God. You must loosen your grip and go back to hell whence you came. And I command now healing to spring forth, to break forth all over this room. And I bless your wonderful name, Jesus, for healing testimonies being released glory to God for swellings going down for infections cancer dying in the name of Jesus arise oh God let your enemy be scattered arise oh God let your enemy be scattered for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever and it is so in Jesus name now let's move to praise mode come on can we praise him We praise you, God. We praise you, God. Glory to God. And it is so in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's go ahead and encourage the person next. Tell them, be healed in Jesus' name. Be healed. Be it. Be healed. Glory to God. Don't try to do it. Be it. Jump to E flat real fast for me, Marsha. Glory to God. Everybody say, bless. Bless. I need everybody standing. We got to receive this together. Since the hours walked up rightly, as a light in the dark land, since thou was placed in thine heart, all the Lord's command, He sent the above nations against thine enemies away. He's standing up inside of you, so let me hear you say. We 
are the devil is defeated. The devil is defeated. We are blessed. All right, listen to me. On last week's Sunday, last week's Sunday, do what you can with this mic. Just give me a little more. I ain't got the plenty, plenty voice. Oh, that's good right there. Um, last week's Sunday, Pastor Kirkpatrick declared by this time tomorrow. Now, the, the, um, the, uh, uh, the leaders hosted a luncheon for me on, on Saturday, Sunday afternoon, Sunday afternoon. Um, and thanks for some good food. It was a blessing to the body of Christ. Body of Christ. <laughs> My body is definitely Holy Ghost. Uh, <laughs> and um, there was a lady there. What's her name, Peter? What's the lady you, you, you Foxy? That was your name, Foxy? Fox, Foxy. All right. All right, Foxy. Foxy called me over. Who called me over? Peter called me over. Somebody called me over and said, I got to, I got to, um, I said, Peter, this is my party, man. This is the party. I come to just love myself and kind of pray for nobody and things of that nature. And so anyway, so went to her and don't stop playing. Yeah, play the pretty good. Um, so um, sit down with her. Now we we left with that anointing of by this time tomorrow. So she says, I got notification that I gotta leave my house. We got we were told to get out the house because we're so far behind in payments and everything going south. And she was crying because um, they don't have the money, they don't have the resources, and she don't know where she's going. Someone say by this time tomorrow. So we prayed over, we demanded the favor of God, the blessing of God, the increase of God, because one of the words that we were given was that there would be debt reduction and debt cancellation. So I, I have a little anniversary looking all nice and they know I was clean. I really was clean. I don't need nobody to say man. I know I was clean in my anniversary. And so she comes to me and, and make up my, my gray suit. So what I, and I, I honestly didn't remember who she was. And um, she says, listen to me. I went to the people them who say I had to get out the house. And said she don't know what happened with the computer or what happened anywhere. say everything God sorted out she don't know how all she know is this man of God prayed for me so I couldn't miss the anniversary <laughs> by this time can y'all shut over by this time tomorrow now let me say this um, y'all know I'm an engineer by profession by training and um because of the rigor of my schedule now with preaching, with highway, with life, with everything else going on, I really don't have time to put into engineering. I haven't gotten a call for any engineering work for me personally in about three plus years. But the man of God spoke by this time tomorrow. And The following day, after the this time tomorrow, phone call, I mean, announcement was made. Got a phone call, says, um, um, this old client of mine says, I got a guy who needs something done, and they can call you soon, and um, are you able to do it? <sighs> I'm, I'm, I'm struggling now, I, I don't know. And then later on that day, another phone call come. By this time tomorrow, right? Now, all this time, I was waiting on the phone to ring when I was in there, nothing, the phone wouldn't ring. So, so here it is now, God is so positioned that I said, you know what, I called a friend of mine, listen, go take care of this and give me this back when you take care of it, because I ain't got time to wait, I'm too busy right now. So you do this, and when you finish doing that, this is what I want for my cut. I ain't telling you what to charge, I'm telling you what I want. So you could charge whatever you want. You could charge dollar more than what I want. You can just get dollar. Just give me mine what I want. 
And so we didn't, we didn't, be, we were able now. This in two projects now that we did not, we had to shift around because a word was spoken by this time tomorrow. I got one better for you. Last night, Pastor Kirk Patrick called me. He said, "Man of God, man of God, man of God." And then he going off in tongues. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> he said, you know, I kept on saying that something is waiting for me back home. So, Pastor, Pastor Kirk Patrick said he left here. When he got home, the landlord of the building that he's renting, he's been there for the five years, said, your lease is up. You need to renew. He said, they have the money to renew. So, he just, don't feel, he just didn't feel it. He told God he's he ready to get out of that building. So he just didn't feel it. So he told Landlord, I'll call you back later this week because I ain't dying what I feel. And so he's driving, praying in the Holy Ghost. And that, that, that's kind of his recreation. Yeah, that's, that's fun time for him, praying in the Holy Ghost. So he's, he's driving on the interstate. Um, and on, on Wednesday, he looks at this building. This church building that's been empty for a little while. Major facility. <sighs> he said, man, let me call him. So he, he calls them, he calls the pastor of the church, because the pastor who was there, um, they blew up so much. So that's where he blessed Brown, because the pastor who was there, um, the church exploded. So they outgrew the building, so they had to buy a Kmart. So they're in a Kmart now, and this building that they were in is just sitting there. So that means the ground already saturated. That's good. You, you won't go somewhere where, where, where there's a little flow happening. So he says, he called the pastor, the pastor said, man, man, KP, you want, let's, let's talk about it, let's talk about it. And so they had a meeting set for Thursday, and he said, his faith dropped because the, the fella canceled the meeting. He said, man, he ain't going to get it, he ain't going to work this out. The fella called him back on Friday. He said, man of God, long story short, guess what? I said, what? I got the keys in my hand. I said, hold on, KP. Hold on, KP. I said, hold on. Say again. Man of God. KP, Kotopo, he gone. I got, I'm talk. He said, I, I want to talk to you with the keys in my hand. Just like 9.30 last night. He said, I have the keys in my hand. He says, it's a $1.2 million building. Seats 800 people on 14 acres. He says it's ready, chairs in place, speakers in place, everything already there. He said, I only ain't having church there this morning because I ain't tell the landlord yet. Didn't believe in God, but this one got me. So I, he said, I, I, you know, I, I trust God, but I, I really didn't see this one coming. Said, I had no plans of doing this. I didn't plan this or work on this or nothing. But he spoke that word. He spoke that word, and so now they shouting in, in Greensboro. Now he said he had to tell me before he tell the people. So I said, can I tell my people? He said, man, shoot, yeah. He said my service is before yours, so just make sure you. Do it. So his service started at eight. So he says, at 9.30, so yeah, 9.30, yeah, you go ahead, you go to the because my people were here first. And so we celebrate an abundant life in... <laughs> abundant life, Greensboro, North Carolina. And he said, he said, he said, he, said, he gonna wait, he even gonna do it next week. Give me time to move stuff. And he says, the only, he says, there's one issue that he had two big screens on the wall, he carried the screen, so he gets to get it. Buy two screens. Yeah, you move it up. <laughs> and say, that's it. Just put two screens on the wall, and they'll be able to have church. And so they're going to have their first service on October the 14th in the new building. Glory to God. 
I had to share that with you all this morning. To know that the anointing that was released in this place is real. I think it's Psalm 102 and 13 that says this is the set time that God has chosen to favor his people. We are in set time. We are in set time. God would not bring that vessel here to declare that word here to go back and walk in the manifestation of it to leave us out there like that. Glory to God. I ain't really got the energy to do what I feel like doing. I see myself running, but I just... Like in my mind, I run it. I'm speeding right now. If, you see, if y'all can see my mind... <laughs> I run it so fast. <laughs> yeah. He said, let's do a Perry Christie on the spot. <laughs> oh my God. Say again. Oh, I forgot about Rita. We prayed for Rita on Sunday. Eh? And they was talking all kind of dumbness, but this cancer and this and that and the other. And she had the when was the appointment? by this time tomorrow. <laughs> and they gave Rita a clean bill of health. This ain't any uh, this is straight this and that. Everybody say bless, bless, bless. Everybody say bless. bless. Yeah, we're blessed. We're blessed in the city. One more time, late in the midnight hour, so late. Late in the midnight hour, God's gonna, God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it. He's gonna turn it. He's gonna turn it. God's gonna turn it. He's gonna turn it. And around, 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 It's gonna work. Late in the midnight hour, so late in the night. Late in the midnight hour, it's gonna. Yeah. We're blessed. We're blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We Strong hope, sickness, and poverty must cease. Woo! For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed when I come and when I go. Woo! I cast down every strong hope, sickness, and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. Hallelujah. Don't touch your neighbor. Just repeat. Say, I know that's right. Tell them, I know that's right. I know that's right. I'm blessed, boy. When I come, when I go, when I turn around, when I sit down, when I lay down, when I wake up. Shucks, you blessed just sitting next to me. <laughs> Lord God Almighty. 
Listen, if you are uncomfortable hearing about the blessings of God, the prosperity that God has promised us, the favor of God, you have permission to leave church early for the next few weeks, possibly months, because we're going to declare this till we believe this. We're going to say this word. We're going to preach this word. We're going to teach this word. Because uh, many of us, our, our limitation is our resources. Come on here. There are things that we want to do for the kingdom, but we don't have the resources to do it. And I'm declaring over this house, that limitation is about to be removed. That limitation is about to be removed. Everything that the Lord puts in your heart to do, you're going to get it done. There is a blessing over this house, over this people, and everything that God has birthed in your spirit is about to manifest. Who am I talking to this morning? Who is that? Glory to God. It's about to manifest. We need... I told you this, and I'm going to keep on saying this. I'm going to repeat this. I'm going to say this because I'm convinced, and so I know God, God is giving us a word. We're going to start that church in Exuma next year. I ain't changing my mind. I ain't stopping. We, we never, we never waited until money to do nothing. We did what God called us to do, and the money came every single time. Glory to God. And so we're going to open the church in Exuma next year. And uh, I'm not sure whether Andrew's supposed to be next year. I'll find out soon. But I know for sure Exuma's next year. We're going to open that next year. Can I tell you something? When I announced the Exuma Church, when I announced the Exuma Church, um, and I don't see her here right now. I don't see her. Um, Helen ain't here. Helen, yeah? Helen ain't here. Helen's daughter, um, oh, God, let's forget them children's name. Holly, Holly, Haley, Hollis, Hadassah. Ah. Uh, she, she, the same one. There's two of them. It's Hollis and Haley, right? Holland. Holland and Hollis. Okay, Hollis and, and Holland. One of them. She said, she said she hit her mother when I was talking. Now, if you remember on a Tuesday night, some weeks ago, I prayed for them and I spoke, lay on one of them, said that they're going to dream dreams, they're going to be a dreamer. Remember, I don't even remember that, that there was one who was on Dream Dreams. Well, this is the same one. She says, on the day before that week, she spoke to her mother. She says, Mommy, I just saw something, and I don't know what it is, but I just saw, watch this now. This is what she said, the exact words. I just saw Life Worship Center opening in Steventon, Exuma. I said, no, you didn't. So she called her mother. She said, yes, she told me that earlier this week. I didn't announce that to no, I didn't say no place, I didn't say no area, no vicinity. Remember, if you remember on the Sunday I said, I said around the Rookers Point, Steventon area. You all remember that? That was last week's Sunday. She came and said, she said to her mother, I just saw something. I saw light. I said, you from Exuma? She said, no. You brought a woman to Exuma? She said, no. The Lord just showed it to me. And out of the mouths of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And so, listen, all the resources that we're going to need to make that happen, we believe is already here. And we're, about to, we're going to take territory for the kingdom of God. No limitations, no restrictions. We will not allow the enemy to tell us what we cannot do. We will not allow our wallet to tell us what we cannot do. We are trusting God with reckless abandon because the favor of God is upon everyone in this room. If you receive that as your word, come on, give God one more praise in here. Glory to God. Let's go to the Word of God. I'm excited about giving the Word. We was, I was thinking about doing some more things. I want to get this Word out because I need to boost your faith. I need us to be believe in this for what God has promised us. Um, I didn't give you this text. I'm, I'm Cassie. So go to Isaiah 60. I know you have Luke, but go to Isaiah 60. Ashita bahandi yo soko bronda da bakata yashi. Hallelujah. We welcome all of our guests here, all of you that are here. Thank you so much for being here. Listen, I attended on Tuesday night one of the most amazing pastoral anniversary service I've ever attended. I was glad just to be there for whoever that pastor was. I'm serious. It was just an amazing service. Um, pastors were calling me all week long saying, boy, you got some good people in your church. I say, I know. I know. You blessed me so much on Tuesday 
by your presence. Lord, when I look in back of me, I see, I ain't see no brown. No brown. You know, that was my, that was my thing. No, I don't want to see no brown. Lord God, and that's so sad, so done. As I looked around me, no brown. You all see, I keep on turning around like, oh, man. And the more people still come in. I was like, yes. Man, I was so blessed. And by your, um, by your um, liberal giving, man, I am, I'll say this much. Robin and I had planned the cruise, the, to go on the cruise. And uh, I was, I, I kid you not, I can be honest, I can be uh, painfully honest. And this I can get delivered. I can preach, my, that's why I got to preach this until I get delivered. I sat down there, Yasmin, on, on, on Tuesday. And I said, Lord, after they didn't do all they didn't do, and, I, and all these gifts and things and everything like that, I said, Lord, all I need, this is what I said, um, friend, true story. I said, now right there. While Rakina was preaching, all that hot word, I said, Lord, let the offering be enough to cover this cruise. Because I didn't book the little cruise. The little cruise didn't book, the little thing didn't do up. And I said, God, I ain't got the dollar nine to pay for the little cruise. But I get on this cruise. <laughs> I get on this. And Lord, when the thing gone on the screen, I said, but glory to God. I, I, I'm like, Lord, how they know? And, and, and to know that the cruise is prayed for, and y'all still bless your boy over and above that. Man, listen, I, y'all bless me, boy. Ain't much things, Peggy, as important to me as my, my vacation every year. Ain't much things as important to me because I ain't never off. I ain't never off. Never. I ain't never off. Um, some of y'all, when y'all send y'all text at 12.30, and I look at it, y'all is at 12.45, y'all is say, you blue tick me. I'm like, it's 12.30. It's like 12, it's after midnight. And so, like, y'all is getting mad because you get blue tick. You really should be the answer at 12.30. Oh, you text me at 12.30, pastor, pray for me. I ain't responding to that. I can pray, but I ain't responding because I know if I, if I ask you what's going on, you can give me a law. So I say, Lord, whatever they're dealing with right now, whatever going on in their house, in their family, heal them, Lord, deliver them, Lord, set them free, re rebuke the devil in Jesus' name, and blue tick. So the vacation that Robin and I do every year is so critical, man. It's like oxygen for us that we need it so bad that we can disconnect and, uh, recreate and refresh and so we are looking forward to that and I thank you so much for all of the gifts all of the auxiliaries man the auxiliaries did an amazing job I I ain't gonna call no name because I can get in trouble I can get in trouble you know um, all did well all I almost start this now no I ain't gonna do it all auxiliaries that auxiliary this auxiliary that auxiliary that all the auxiliaries did an amazing job. I thank you so much and for your liberal giving um, towards your man of God. And I declare because you gave in to me, your cupboards will never go empty. I pronounce the blessing of God over you for every seed that you sowed into me. Watch this. I heard this in the blessed me. It says, if you give the prophet a glass of water, you will receive the prophet's reward. Now, I, was, I, I never really studied it, but as someone was teaching the other day, and when they said it, it made sense to me. They said, the pro what's a prophet's reward? And I, I, I always wondered what that was. Um, I still haven't studied it, but what they said resonated in my spirit. They said, when you give a prophet a glass of water, you get a prophet's reward. What's the reward of the prophet? The reward of the prophet is what the prophet speaking comes to pass in your life. Whatever the prophet spoke, it comes to pass. That's the reward of the prophet. That's what the prophet has to give to you, a word that manifests. Well, I speak over you in this room right now. I prophesy over every one of you that increases your portion and that you walk under sustained abundance as the Lord has spoken. We command the blessing and favor and increase of God over your life. We prophesy it. We mandate it. We command it to manifest. Promotions on the job. 
multiple streams of income. Sweatless financial victory. We pray for passive income to come into your life. That employers are being birthed in this house. Entrepreneurs are springing forth. We command the blessing of God over you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. It is so. If you receive it, just come into agreement with it, and it is so. Hallelujah. All right. Isaiah 60 is where we're going to be, and we're going to work this word today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. I mean this, boy. Squeeze that person hand next. Tell him I feel something coming. I feel something coming. I feel something coming. Even if you don't, just prophesy until it comes to you. I feel something coming. Mm, glory to God. Higher! Glory to God. I feel something coming. Woo. I feel something coming. I feel something coming. Something coming. Something's coming. Something is coming to your house. Something is coming to your marriage. Something is coming to your children. Something is coming. Something is coming. And I ain't talking about no demonic attack now. I'm talking angels being sent on assignment. That's about to prosper you. That's about to change your condition. Change your situation. Something is coming. Woo! Glory to God. Something is coming. Glory to God. Glory to God. Avad, hear me, sir. I was supposed to call you all week long. I promised your mother to call you. But something is coming, Avad. Now listen to me, son. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. Do not curse this season. I didn't even hear this when I told your mom I want to talk to you. Kai was supposed to go off and the doors closed. Kaz had asked me to talk to him because he was in a place of depression. And I said to him, son, listen, God has ordered your steps every step of the way. How do you believe that God has abandoned you now? Where you are is a part of the process. He never wanted to come back home because all he saw was that he had to be over there for the doors to open. Guys, we forget this part of the story. That boy, was he was, he was livid at his mother. He was mad at Kaz. Because if mommy had just do this, if she had just do the other, I'd have been straight. And now I'm stuck here at home. Ain't no opportunities in the Bahamas. If I had stayed over there, I would have gotten scholarships. I would have gotten this. I would have gotten the other because I was at a good school and things would have lined up. But mommy, man, she messed this whole thing up. And then there was a school that called them and the guy said, no. That ain't what God said. Hmm. Avad, listen to me, boy. I mean boy in a derogatory way. God has your steps ordered. Don't curse your future with your own mouth. Speak life over where you are now. Speak life. God ain't shocked and said, oh, what do I do with a vibe? God ain't surprised about what's happening now. See, this got God trying to figure out, okay, let me work a plan to get the Avad straight. No, it don't work that way. Before you were conceived in the womb, God laid out a plan for you. God laid out, carved out a plan for you. And all you got to do, son, is align with the will of God for your life. And you will see doors open. Hear me. 
you will see doors open. Align with the will of God for your life. Align with the will of God for your life. You are at a place now where, bro, the truth of the matter is you need God to manifest. You need to see the hand of God. And you are at the place where her faith ain't going to do it no more. She's praying, but that ain't going to do it. You need to align now and watch things manifest. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you are right where God wants you to be. You are right where he wants you to be. Don't curse where you are out of your mouth. Speak life about where you are. Watch what's going to happen. I'm telling you, watch it. Watch it. Glory to God. Something's coming. Hallelujah. Something's coming. Oh, if I could get your faith to lift in this room today. Something's coming. Something's coming. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm getting ready to see, eh? And she tabaha see under the book of Tabaha. He banned that she tabaha. Something I've never seen. Hiya! I'm getting ready to see something. Glory, 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 glory. Something I've never seen. Read the text. Keep on playing that. Arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Lift up thine eyes round about and see all they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Thy sons shall come from far and thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Then thou shalt see and flow together and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because of the abundance of the sea. You're going to be afraid, says God. You're going to get fearful because of the abundance that's about to be given unto you. And the forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Give me that next verse. Give me that verse 6. And the multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries are the young camels of Midian and Ephah. All they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. And they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. Now here's the problem. Darkness is covering the earth and gross darkness the people. But God says, I will prosper people just so they can prosper you. Oh, man. There are some people being prospered right now and the only reason they are being prospered is to prosper you. Y'all in just heard what I said. The text says darkness covers the people and gross darkness. Darkness covers the earth and gross darkness the people. But here it is, some people come in bringing gold and incense. Where are they getting this from? God says, because I have chosen this time to favor you, I will bless people to bring blessings to you. I will favor people to increase you. Can you get the faith to believe it? Glory to God. All right. Hallelujah. All right, go to six people you did not drive here. Tell them welcome to the life experience. And don't leave them, but you tell them there's something's coming. Something's coming. I said something's coming. Glory to God. Getting ready to see.
Say that over me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. God, again, we welcome all of you that are here. Now, I, I, am, I know that there's still some strongholds to be broken, and some people had almost had a fit this week that they'd be in the church Sunday and Tuesday. So I, I know they had to take the day off. I was like, boy, one new coming today, you know, be in the church Sunday and Tuesday? Now, I know pastors going to see me again Sunday now. You, you come again? I'll see you all again October for the new month. Glory to God. We got a, the, the children about to have an amazing time today. Um, something exciting is happening for the church. Y'all, I shouldn't tell y'all because y'all are going to go. But <laughs> they have an amazing presentation right here. They can have. Sorry? You want to take the teen? I don't tell people they come to church like, okay, the kids go. Lord God. Huh? It's important. All right, teens. Um, um, you have been requested to join those. If you want to stay with me, stay, please. But if you don't want to, but if you want to go, you could go. Yeah. Yeah. I hear they got dog, I think, over there. All kind of things happening over there. Yeah. All right. Good. We honor God again for all of you that are here. Thank God for you being here. Um, don't forget, meals on Tuesdays again on this Tuesday. Start at 6 p.m. Of course, um, uh, dinner will be prepared. We serve your children at 6 o'clock, and then we serve you after service. And so we encourage you to be here. It's been going wonderfully well these past two Tuesdays. Of course, we took this Tuesday off our anniversary, and we resume on um, this coming Tuesday, the day after tomorrow. And then we have outreach this week, I believe. I think we do. Um, Sam isn't here, um, but please stay next to your cell phones. We're going to confirm that by, by um, text in one of the groups and all, or in all of the groups um, concerning outreach that should take place this week. I believe it's scheduled for Thursday. I need to hit with Sam. Um, anniversary is just so good, I just disconnect. I, like, I just take the rest of the week off, kind of. All right. Um, I have to begin today by going over declarations. I have to because these declarations are pulled from the teachings from Pastor Kirk Patrick on Saturday and Sunday, and I need to lay this out to you before I go into the Word. And I'll tell you this now so that you can un- know this. The Word is going to be a recap of the Word that we, speak, we spoke from Luke. And so this is almost like a complete recap day, so some of you are going to say, I'm going to disconnect my brain, and if you do that, you're going to miss what God has to say to you. All right. Um, there are some of us that have a strong spirit of familiarity, and so when we think we know something, we just disconnect and say, anyway, I need that. I good. All right. Um, but I heard it strong that we need to repeat, like Jesus said several times, again, I say unto you. That is what this is this morning. This is an again, I say unto you. Now, everyone that says, I don't need to hear it again, show me your bank account. Show me the status of your rent. Show me your light bill. Show me your health. Show me your relationships. You need to hear it again. Say amen to that. You don't want to, but you know it's true. And so I believe this, and this has been my posture ever since the Lord gave this to us last year for I don't let words go until there's manifestation. That's the new posture of Denzel Road. That I will, I will declare and declare. I just talked to God about y'all this week because there's a word concerning October. I talked to God about it last week, about that this week. And the condition the Lord says, if you guys stay faithful in your giving and stay faithful in the things of God, God says, I'm going to give you a contract that you ain't had all year. I'm going to blow your minds. I'm believing. I ain't let that go. It's a word that God spoke. And, and, and I can't be teaching this with all this fervor and with all this repetition and then not believe it, not put it into practice. So I've been talking to God. I said, God, now don't forget now, Brett and Debbie. And I said, this is that. 
Now, God, don't forget now. We are believing for Brent and Debbie. And I rebuke every demon and devil that try to stop this from manifesting. I command the blessings of God over them as you said it because I declared it and you backed me up. Because he also gave me a word that says, you must say what I tell you to say because you are my prophet. And I will back up your words as he said to me. So, man, I'm saying, I'm very careful what I say, but when I say it, I'm praying it through because it got to manifest. Glory to God. Someone shout, I shall have whatever I say. That's the word of God. All right. Now, let me try my best to kind of, I might even read my notes today. Let me read the first part. Besides, write my notes. Now, beloved. You see it, right? That's how it starts. You see it now, beloved. Now, beloved. Yeah, now, now, beloved. Now, beloved, it is not our M.O. That means modus operandi. Yeah? That's, that's Latin for something. Uh, to go... <laughs> Not our modus operandi. I think that's mode of operation, right? Yeah. To go through any bit of teaching before we give you the declaration. We don't do that. However, today I believe that it is absolutely necessary for us to lay a foundation for these declarations that we're about to release. Make no mistake about it, as in my notes. The enemy is on an all-out assault trying to erode, diminish, and extinguish the faith of the believer. He is on an all-out assault to erode, diminish, and totally extinguish to out the fire of your faith. With the kind of word that we've been receiving that you heard already for this morning, understand that the devil does not want you to walk in full manifestation of what we're talking about. And so the attacks are going to become more and more intense, more and more consistent, uh, until you get to the place where you stop believing God. This is the kind of time when you are shouting in church because that lady got her house back and you get a call saying, you're four months behind, you're about to go in collection. You don't like hearing that, but I'm telling you, the enemy says, I cannot allow them to believe what I say. I cannot let them to, act, sorry, not believe what I say, to believe what God has said. I cannot get, let them get to the place where they actually believe the promises of God. And so because we are right on the edge, right on the verge of walking into this season of sustained abundance, he is going to intensify his attacks on your faith. He is not attacking your life. He is attacking your faith. Because he knows that faith is the currency, beloved. It is the currency of the kingdom. Nothing happens in this domain of the kingdom of God outside of faith. If you do not believe it, you will not see it. If you do not believe it, you will not see it. I don't believe it's possible. Well, it won't be for you. We believe in this church that we're about to see creative miracles manifest. Pastor Rakino said to us on Tuesday night, he says that the supernatural that we have seen has only been in the classroom. The miracles we have seen has only been preparation. Now, for those that are new, you will understand what that means. You will understand that we saw cancerous growth just go down in service. You will understand that we saw legs fused together that I'm right there in the service. That we saw spinal columns realign. We saw persons get out of wheelchairs. We saw that in this house. And for God to say that's practice. Oh, man. We have seen that. We're, we've been seeing that kind of manifestation of the hand of God. This girl right here, her sister, glory to God, her lungs were, they were pretty much non-functioning. We prayed for three nights during the service. And by the end of the service, she was getting ready to get out of the hospital. Y'all remember that? Her, her own self, just a few weeks ago, had some conditions going on that she didn't tell me the details of. We laid hands on a Tuesday night and declared no more. She was supposed to go to the doctor. She did it in the States. She did a test here. And they sent the results to the States. They said, don't come no more. Y'all ain't responding right. That was just, what, two months ago? Yeah, a month ago? Two months ago that happened right here. And, and then God says... That was classroom. 
You ain't see. You ain't see miracles yet. And so therefore, understand, with that kind of word, sooner or later, someone around here, we can hear they got some sickness, some kind of disease, and then now your faith starts to erode. He is after our faith. Because he understands nothing manifests in this kingdom, in this system, unless you believe for it. So if you don't believe that it can happen, it won't happen. I've been saying this off and on. I'm going to keep on saying it until it begins more on, more on than off. That money problem is not the only problem to have. But some of us cannot fathom that because our money problem is so big. But I'm declaring, and not that I'm declaring that you can have more problems, but I'm declaring that money ain't going to be the problem no more. Three, y'all connect. All right. We can get something else to pray for. Something else to consume your prayer time. Because right now, it's consumed with bless me. Pray of Jabez. Enlarge my territory. Lord, bless me indeed. My prayer is about to shift. Glory to God. And I told you, I don't stop praying until it manifests, but I'm telling you, I'm about to stop praying about that. Because that's about to manifest so I can shift on something else. Glory to God. Now watch this. The word of God says this. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. Add the substrata of faith. That's the bottom. The foundation. Substrata. At the root of faith is knowledge. At the root of faith is knowledge. So Hosea 4 and 6 is correct. Um, that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because if you lack knowledge, you will lack faith. To every, to every, to every act of faith, every move of faith, every walk of faith, there must be a word connected to that faith. Faith does not work in a vacuum. Faith is not abstract. You can't just say, I have faith. That, that statement is incomplete. I, 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 I walk by faith. Okay, faith in what? Every faith confession must be linked to some word that you have knowledge of. Is it making sense? Faith is not a broad brush. All right. I, I, had to, I had to make this clear to me in order to get it to you. For all of my life, I had faith for salvation. I had faith to be filled with tongues and filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with tongues, speak with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> filled with the Holy Ghost, speak with tongues. I had faith for that. Why? Because I constantly heard that. I constantly heard about being saved. I constantly heard about being filled with the Holy Ghost. And so I had that kind of faith. But when I started pastoring this church, I did not have faith for healing. So faith isn't a broad brush. I did have faith, but faith is directional. And what determines its direction is the word that you receive. Talk to me, are you making any sense? So not because you have faith for healing, it means that you have faith for money. Not because you have faith. There are persons who have faith and believe God and walk in all kind of prosperity, but if a demon show up, they break off running. Somebody change their voice? I can do it. So, <laughs> oh, boy. And some of y'all are there like, what are you talking about? I, we, we didn't been there, done that. We didn't see the voice change. And the actions change. And there are people that have faith for prosperity, but if one demon show up, they're on the first bus out of town. And so understand, that's why the Bible says, and P Peter says to us, that we have to add to our faith. There is, faith is a walk, 
And your walk is determined, your faith walk is determined by the revelation or the word you receive. How we do, I, I got to build this foundation. I'm getting ready for declarations now, but I got to build this foundation. Your faith walk is determined by the word you receive. That's why, let me say this here, to offend our visitors, hopefully, and, and, and to bless you at the end of the day. That's why you got to be careful uh, to where, uh, with regard to where you go for word. Okay, I, I, I just didn't want to say it the way the sound offensive. That's why I changed it to say, be careful where you go for word. Be careful what church you go to. I was trying to say it the nice way, but it didn't come off because y'all is lost. Be, be careful where you go to church because some of us are lopsided. Lord, baby, laugh. Because we, oh, man, Denzel, be careful. We only get in this one word every day. That's the one word we get, and that's all we get. And so we lean in, in this direction. Not understanding that there are all these other directions that you could be going in. But because it's all you're hearing, and I ain't give no example, but it's all you're hearing, let's just say hypothetically, deliverance, or prophecy. So every Sunday is another prophecy, and prophecy, and prophecy, and prophecy, and prophecy, and prophecy, and prophecy. You're failing in your life, but you go to a smoking hot church. You're one-dimensional. You are lopsided. You're leaning heavy in one direction because that's all you're getting to eat. And faith must be attached to a revelation. A word. Glory to God. I'm feeling this. I hope you're all feeling this too. This thing leaping on the inside of me. And, and no wonder why we have so many believers that cannot lift heavy weights. We get all kind of believers that all they can do in the gym is lift the bar. And they're struggling with the bar. All they foot up in the air. Streaming, trying to get it up. Because, because you're only getting this one dimension of the word. You know what? I'm going to say this and someone's going to throw a Bible at me. That's your business. And get mad at me. I love Joseph Prince. That's my boy. That boy off the chain. But let me say this. Uh, uh, some of us getting so loaded on grace that we become a one dimensional. Grace is not, the message of grace needs to be preached because the message of law is so predominant in the church today. So we need to hear about the grace of God, but it must be rightly divided and it must be metered with truth. Because there's a gospel of grace and truth. And if you do not show me how the message of grace then manifest in me living the kingdom life and causing the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ, then you are causing me to be lopsided. The message of grace is a message of access. <laughs> to what? Power. Grace came to give us access to power. Outside of grace, let me go back to the garden. We were thrown out of the garden. Grace let us back in. And so if you stay at grace, that means you stay in at the entrance. Grace is the door that we go through to live the fullness of the kingdom life. So we walk through the door of grace, and through that door of grace, we have a multiplicity of things that God has made available to us that we are to walk in, but you can't get in it without grace. So grace is fundamental, it's critical, but it is the platform, it's the springboard for us to launch into kingdom living. Some of you about to send an email to Joseph Prince. I love him. I love him. I believe. I thank God for him. And I believe he's very balanced. We just listen to one part of him. We don't listen to enough. So he has the full balance of what he has to declare. But anyway, close bracket. So, the word that we hear determines the faith that we walk in. The word that we hear determines the faith that we walk in. No, no, no. Let me move from the word here because we may get that wrong. The word we receive 
determines the faith we walk in. Let's go ahead and say, the word I receive determines the faith I walk in. Go ahead and say that. All right. So then we see, well, and let's take that further. The faith I walk in determines the victory I will see. This is the victory that overcomes even our, our faith. And so, <laughs> your word determines your level of faith. And your level of faith determines your level of victory. I told you I did not have a word concerning healing. And so, I could not believe for healing. And therefore, I didn't see any healing. February 12th. Um, February, March 12th, things changed for me. In March 12th, no, 2012, March, that's what I want to say. 2012, in March, the game changed. I got the word concerning the supernatural. I got the word concerning healing. And then faith came alive with regard to healing. And now I am scared to pray for no one. So the Bishop Gibson yesterday, who we prayed for two Sundays ago, he said, I'm ready to go home. He says, I'm strong, man. I'm up and down. I had lost my appetite. I had lost everything. He says, but now I didn't get my strength back. I'm ready to go back home. I'm ready to go ahead and go work. 84 years old. I ain't scared to pray for no one now. I'm not bragging on Denzel. I'm saying when you get a word, faith comes alive. And when you have faith, you know victory is inevitable. Mm. The bishop scared me a little bit. He said, he said Bishop, but yeah, this one thing, though. I love him in my life, but he says, I keep on hearing this choir singing. I said, oh boy, Bishop, oh boy. I said, how they sound? I said, Bishop, this is the sweetest choir I ever heard in my life. I said, oh boy. I said, oh. He, he said, your father-in-law being in the house, and I asked him, I said, you hear that music? He said, no, I hear that music. He said, the choir was just singing. I said, Bishop, you, you can hear that choir? Boy, I don't know. He said, boy, this sound good. So anyway, I said, well, I can leave that alone. We should be in that choir singing. And Bishop said, this sound good. I cool with that. I cool with a man of God going to hear in the choir. I got right with that. I get a problem, though, just, and I say this over the church all the time. If we get faith to this, I will keep on saying that your faith comes alive. I don't want people of this church to be going by cancer. I don't want cancer carriers out. Neither diabetes. Definitely not Alzheimer's. Keep you in perfect peace. So I just don't want to see that. Pastor, you can't say that. Why not? No, you can't say it because you don't believe for it. I can say it, and I'm going to say it enough until your faith comes alive to say you will not go by way of affliction. I tell you, Bishop back home, strong, walking up and down, eating the food, but he said the choir is singing. And I have a problem again that I can't say, I really can feel that in my spirit. Bishop can fool me around. I'd go to that concert. say, and then you go to see Bishop gone in the choir. <laughs> Let's see, you know, he joined the choir. Another, another bishop in our church, Bishop Leon Ferguson, spoke to his granddaughter, granddaughter the other day. She said, man, said, um, um, she went in, in, in daddy's room that morning and he put on some shoes. She says, 2.30 in the morning. I said, daddy, where are you going? He said, again, on a journey. I said, he put some shoes on. Lay across the bed. Gone. That's how Jan was supposed to go. I said, that's what I'm talking about. Put his shoes on. Again, take a journey. Don't stand on but heaven ain't real. Go on there. Well, to put them shoes on, he's out here. Well, that, that won't get us ready for that. I told you, we can cross our arm and say it's time to go. I declared it over my daddy. You know, sitting there taking daddy out. Daddy can call him and say, I'm ready. And he said, Funz, you sure you're ready? Funz, you sure? Funz said, I'm ready to go. I said, all right, all right, go on then. We shake your hand, he can bless us. Say, Funz, lay your hand on my head. Daddy, got to lay your hand on my head. Now, Funz, bless me one more time. And we can be around the bed, he can bless us all. And we can start singing. Now, I, 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 can be, I can get scared. If we sing Master Speaker, you can go. <laughs> That's your favorite song. Now. You say, if you start singing Master Speaker, you can never go. You can never dead. We can sing a song he don't like. <laughs> 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 you 
Yeah, we can't, we can't sing master speak. We have six of bells. Because boy, you'll say the sing all night. That's what you, you forget you gotta die. <laughs> you know what? Wouldn't it be so awesome if that's where we go and that means that at after this we could be laughing and crying. We'd be laughing and smiling. Why? Because we finish. <laughs> and we can all, boy, I can preach it. How about I preach to every life member for real? Death, where is thy sting? Good God. Every funeral from this church, we'd be able to preach that because we mean it. We ain't preaching because it it's in the Bible, but because we were to laugh at death, death, where you stay? Grave, where is your victory? <laughs> hey, all right, where was I? We <laughs> your level of revelation, the revelation that you receive, determines your faith. And the level of your faith determines the victory that you will walk in. Now, here we go. Time for declarations. God has been saying to your pastor, you need to now begin to declare over this people and to teach these people, my people, that I have no problem with them prospering. I need you to begin letting them know that it's actually my desire for them to walk in abundance. Now, now, life, listen to me and hear me good. Don't you let nobody make you feel bad that your church is on a series talking about abundance. Because when we spent a year on being salt, they wasn't here. They wasn't here. Ooh, that felt good coming out. We spent six months talking about deliverance and casting out devils. They weren't here. We spend weeks upon weeks upon weeks talking about sin and living holy. <laughs> Someone came to this church one time and says, boy, I'm dancing teaching them people a lot of things. They teach them how to dress. They ain't know to get back to me. And, you know, you pray for me because all I said in my mind, you can get sick. And you can need them seeing people to come pray for you. And the Lord had it so during the revival you had in June. You know, someone, someone they didn't know, they, they, tell, they talk again. Say, boy, some of the dancing people, boy, they could pray, boy. Mm. Mm. Boy, they could pray. And I said, tell them, but they can't dress. What you want, the dress or the prayer? Some of y'all thinking like, mm. we took we took almost a year talking on prayer. We had series talking about filling the Holy Ghost. We have never spent any length of time talking about your prosperity and your abundance. So I'm telling you, this can soon start playing on television, and they can start seeing it. They can start playing on the radio, and they can say, "Life switch." There's a money church. Let them talk. Because, because we know how to be salt and light. Because we know how to live holy. Because we know how to pray. God says it's set time now for me to prosper these people because they did it the right way. We done laid the right foundation now. Now God says, now let me bless you. I can now trust you to bless you. Because I know if I bless you, you ain't going to throw me off the boat. Hey, glory to God. So here we are now. That is the word that we are operating under. I'm going to say this. I'm going to miss a Sunday coming up when we go on our cruise. And I'm going to tell the men of God that are coming here, this is where we are in this house. Because right now, I ain't want us to go nowhere else except the Lord say go someplace else. We're going to be talking this. We're going to be, we're going to be receiving this until we actually believe it. Because money answers all things. We can't, we can't uh, launch ministries in Eleuthera without the money. We can't launch an Exuma without the money. We can't stay on the television without the money. We cannot go into these communities and do more than pray 
everybody going and praying. And when they didn't pray, the people still hungry. The people still need jobs. God's, when God launched this ministry, God said this ministry is called to be an employer. That's written in our, in our constitutional documents that we're going to open businesses. So when we go in communities and tell them that Jesus saved and they get saved and they say they don't have no job, we say show up in the morning. We're going to have something for you to do. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. The scripture that started this church, glory to God, at the end of the book of Acts chapter 4, and it says, and they had all things in common, nothing was lacking. That's what the Lord gave to me when we got started. He says, they had all things in common, and nothing was lacking. I told you this, your pastor will drive a Mercedes, will drive an up-to-date Mercedes, but so will you. Now, I can give you the word so you can get yours. Now, if you don't use the word to get yours, don't get mad at me. Everything I do, I can tell you. I do it now. Everything I do, I tell y'all. My struggle, I tell y'all. My victory, I tell y'all. So when I get in mind and you don't come along, that's because you don't want to come. But we're going to give you the, equip, the, the, the equipment. I say tools and equipment at the same time. The tools, the equipment, we can give you all that you need so that we can walk in this together. Amen. Glory to God. Can I move now to these declarations? Do we have anybody's faith just now? Anybody get it? All right, glory to God. So your word needs a faith. Your faith needs a word to anchor itself to. All right, number one, declaration number one. I will live and function as though God has designed me to prosper. I will live and function as though God has designed me to prosper. Glory to God. I even ain't going to expand. I want you to say that with some authority. Ready, read. Watch this. If you believe that, that means if you are not prospering, you are malfunctioning. You are out of order when you're not prospering. You need to go to the shop. You need to get fixed. The devil has convinced us that we're fixed when we're not prospering. And watch this. Listen, the devil got us so twist up um, Lexus that when we get blessed, we get scared. First thing, how I can spend this because this ain't going to last. Come and talk to me, everybody. When a blessing come your way, you panic. You sit down. Oh, boy, I, I got to calculate this out. Oh, okay, no, I can't pay that bill. Because one thing comes to your mind, I should catch up the mortgage. They say, oh, Lord, the light. And we, we have been conditioned to believe it soon run out. So, so we, we, we be scared. We can't even praise God good because we're scared that it soon run out. I'm declaring that those days are over in our lives, that we will no longer live with that kind of fear. We will live believing we're supposed to be blessed. I remember I used to watch Mike Freeman every morning on, on, on the Word, I think it was. I was watching Mike Freeman every morning. And, uh, and I'm realizing now the Lord had me through that phase. But three, four years ago, um, I wasn't ready to receive it, but I was, I was just watching it. And it's good. You get it up in your spirit, and the Lord bring it back when you're ready for it. He was talking about four years ago, said he was in the Bahamas for vacation, and his daughter had twins. And, and his daughter was there with her little twins, two, two little babies, and the son was there too. And uh, so he went to the Gucci store, and he bought some Gucci little tennis for his little baby grandchildren. And said, his son, that's what the grandchildren was for the daughter, his son says, listen, you better take care of them shoes, because when I get my children, they're coming for them. The same thing we would say. These Gucci shoes for babies. The children was like two years old. And so his thing was, mm -mm, when, they, when they get older, give me them. My children gonna wear them. And he said he rebuked his son. I watch him. He said, his son, I've never heard such a spirit of poverty in my life. Why you believe that you gotta wait for someone's hand-me-downs? 
Now, when I heard it, because of the posture I was in and because of the word I was receiving, I was mad at Freeman and said, Freeman bragging because all the money he has. As I told you, you need to be in the right environment to get the right word. So I watched that and got upset. I said, Freeman showing off because he could buy all these Gucci for your children. But I understand now that he was correct because his son was living in a mentality that says, I got to make sure I preserve this because this may soon run out. And if it run out, I can't replace it. That's a poverty mindset. Glory to God. We serve a God that wastes on us. I said this to y'all several weeks ago that the word prodigal, prodigal, sorry, means excessive. And so we call the son the prodigal son. But I said to you that the story is actually about the prodigal father. That the father wasted more than the son wasted. Someone say prove it. When the boy was leaving the house, hold on, when he was in the, in the house, he had wealth because he was in the house. When he was leaving the house, the father then gave him the portion of the wealth that was due him. Laid him out with that and sent him on his way. He wasted all that he had. Came back home and what did the father do? The father then bestowed another portion of wealth on him. The same boy that wasted the first portion that ran away from, no sorry, he wasted the second portion. He ran away from the first portion and now he comes and gets a third portion. That's a prodigal father, not a prodigal son. Y'all didn't get it, y'all. He gets back home and gets a ring, gets slippers, gets a robe, get a fatted calf killed for him and says, you will not serve in my house because you are my son. He came there saying, just let me be one of the hired servants. He says, no, I can't do that because you are my son. And just because you are my son, you are entitled to be above and not beneath. You are entitled to be the lender, not the borrower. You are entitled, glory to God, to be blessed going and blessed coming. This ain't no lucky thing that happened. You have to be lucky. You got to no, I'm entitled to have this. Hmm. Peggy, this thing, um, um, I've been trying to fix this text. I have reworded the text to make it sound comfortable to my poverty mindset. Deuteronomy 8 and 18. Cassie with me, she throw it up there. Uh, what, look, find it when you can, Cassie. 8, 8, I think it's 8 and 18. If it ain't, move it class. I hope that's it. <laughs> Remember the Lord thy God. For it is he that gave us the power to get well. Someone say power. power. He gives us the power to get well. What the rest of the text say? Oh, that's it. Thanks, guys. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. Now, watch this. Number one, this is always make you shout. Whenever you see God swear, that's powerful. Because when God swear, he have to swear by himself. Because he ain't really had nothing else to swear to. Because usually when you swear, you swear to something that you have control of. You can, God says, I swear this by myself. So he sweared a promise to himself. You know, he's always saying, I swear on my children, I swear on this. No, he had none. He, had, he couldn't find nothing else to swear to because he's God. And so he swears it to himself. He says, he says, I'm going to establish the covenant which I swear unto my fathers. Now, the way I used to teach this, beloved, I used to teach it like this. I said, God, he gives us the power to get wealth so that we can do the work of the kingdom. That's, that's, that's what I say. Yes. That's what, I, that's what I say, that God gives you the power to get wealth so you can do all the things that he has called you to do. Because I, I need to put a work next to it to make me feel satisfied. Because in my mind, you only get stuff to work. That God ain't want you blessed just to be blessed. So then I had to revisit this thing and look at the covenant. That he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers. And I went to the covenant, and the covenant said nothing about work. The covenant says, in blessing, I will bless you. Y'all ain't hearing what I'm saying. Yeah, okay, I, that, that's why I got to repeat this stuff like next week and the week after. The covenant is, in blessing, I will bless you. I will cause your seed to be like the sand on the shore. 
He says, if anyone bless you, they'll be blessed. And if they curse you, they will be cursed. You will not be able to be, you will not be, able to be cursed by anybody because whom the Lord bless, no man can curse. And God says, I give you the power to get wealth to ensure that what I said comes to pass. In other words, God says, I'll bless you just to keep my promise to you. Oh, man, just the baby with me. I, I need you all to come along. He says, I will bless you just to keep my promise. And, and I had to learn this, that there are some things that God does for us just because he loves us. You, you, oh, man, don't you all do this too? Like, every once in a while, you take your children out for nothing? Don't you do that? You all don't do that? Y'all scare me now. <laughs> like for nothing. I, of course, when they get good grades, they get one little cheeseburger from McDonald's and they're having a meal. But sometimes in the middle of the year, you ain't getting no report card, no grades yet, but just because they are yours. And you have the ability to do so. Glory to God. You treat them every now and then. Yeah, I get none. My children is very expensive because they spurl. They spurl. They spurl relative to food. Nothing else, just food. They, they food spurred, you know? And, and, and so, so, like, because for them, like, out back and poop deck is regular. Spurred. You know, so, Daddy, we should get something to eat. I said, well, where you want to go? Let's go to Bahama. <laughs> when I was these turn age, the joy of my life was to see Lura turn towards Oaksville. See, y'all rich, y'all ain't over that. When I see that car turn in the direction of Oaks Field, everything inside me would leap. This is about to be a good day. What? What? We go into McDonald's, boo. And I don't know, we never used to go Palmdale or downtown. I don't even know there was other McDonald's. All I know is Oaksville. When you see that car turn Oaksville, man, this is a party. <laughs> Glory to God. Uh, but God says, just like you bless your children for nothing, or really, you just bless them because they are yours. He says, don't believe you are a better father than I am. You are not a better parent than me. I, I love on my children because they're mine. I bless them because they're mine. Someone said, I received that. Oh, glory to God. Number two, he says, second declaration, I will make seeking God my focus as this is the key to abundant living. No explanation needed there. The key to abundant living is seeking God. Not seeking money, but seeking God. Let's make the declaration ready, read. Okay, everybody didn't read it because they don't need to. Let's, let's, let's just give them another chance to read it. I ain't think no big words there. Ready, read. Number three, watch this now. Now, if you don't read number two, I know you can read number three. Number two, number three says this. I will return the first tenth of my income to God through his church because I love God. Now, let's do it again. I will return the first tenth of my income to God through his church because I love God. Now, some of you are saying, Pastor, you're trying to swing me. We're talking about being blessed and prosperous, and now you throw this in there trying to get money to the church. No, I'm trying to get money to you. I'm trying to get favor to you. I will return the first tenth the first tenth, not a tenth, not a tenth, but the first tenth. I will return the first tenth of my income to God through his church because I love God. A couple of things. Number one is the first tenth. Someone say first tenth. That means that when you get your income, you take that out first. Even though you may not go to the church and give it first, you take that out first. You set that aside. You don't do anything else and recalculate money for other stuff before you do what belongs to God. Because if you do everything else first, you will end up short. Fun skin in my hand this week. 
First thing I did, I took it out, and I laid it, I counted the first time, and I laid it aside. Why? Because I didn't want to count it no more. Because, you know, when I count it, it's like, whoa. Whoa. Oh, so I laid it aside. That was laid aside from, what, Wednesday or so. I ain't look at it since. The first time I looked at it was this morning. And I gave it to Robin. I ain't counted it again. So I said, I don't know. Because I won't touch it. I won't count it. Because if you look at it, and then you look at what you got to do. Come on here. Something on the inside you can say, you know what? Let me just pull off one little something. Then I ain't take off much. Just pull off one little something, and I can make it up next time. And see, when you do that, and you make it up, and you feel justified, you make it seem as though you're paying some dues. This is not dues that you make up. This is an act of love and an act of faith. I trust God. I have faith in God, and so I give him first. We have to move from seeing tithe as dues. Because the people who see tithe as dues are the ones when they don't come to church, they don't pay no dues because well, I wasn't there, so I don't need to pay no dues. It's not a dues. It's not law. And I, I struggle with persons who want to justify and show me through the Bible why I have to pay tithes. We are under grace, but I was under the law. And I see when Abraham gave tithes to the king of Melchizedek, but that was all Old Testament. We are now in the New Testament. Did you ever see Jesus say, pay your tithes? You ever see Paul say, pay your tithes? You don't have to pay your tithes. We're under grace, and so we don't need to pay our tithes. Watch this. Under the law, the word of God says this, that if you sleep with a woman, you have sin. Under grace, he says, if you look at her, and desire her in your mind that you're going to have her, he says you sin. Under the law, he says that if you hit your neighbor, murder your neighbor, that's sin. Under grace, he says if you hate your neighbor, without a cause. You don't them, you just don't like them. For whatever reason, he says you have sin. Glory to God. You've committed murder, you just like you kill them. For hating them, you kill them. That's what he says. And so when you keep on going through what Jesus says, you realize that grace is a higher standard. How we doing? Repeat after me. Say, grace is a higher standard. Therefore, if you are declaring that the law says give 10%, and grace is a higher standard, what are you complaining about again? And so when you understand that you give by love, you don't end with your tithe. You begin with your tithe. Because it's not really your tithe, it's his tithe. Because he says, it belongs to me. Glory to God. Now the vehicle by which we give is the church. So we give to God through the church. We don't give to the church. When you give to the church, you monitor your money. When you give through the church, you give it and say, God, whatever they do, help they live right, because if they mess it up, they can go to hell, not me. See, now, we, we're ready to talk about this blessing and prosperous living, but this part is uncomfortable. See, this is all part of the package. Say amen to that. So, he says, you must give the first ten. It requires faith to give first. Whatever you give to first, it says where your faith is. You write and write that down. It requires faith to give first. The reason you pay your light bill first is because you have more faith in BPL turning off your light than you have in God making a way for you. Whatever you do first is what you have the most faith in. So understand that the tithe is two things. It's definitely not a money test. The tithe is a faith test and a love test. It confirms where your faith is and it confirms where your love is. And so those who want to go through an Old Testament study and want to talk about, well, what about the part where it says, that the priest, if he's on a journey and he's far from the church, he could eat the tithe. And so can I eat my tithe? Can I this and that? I ain't got time for that. If you're struggling with that, we have, your problem is not money. Your problem is your heart. I, 
I don't do that no more. I used to like doing um, biblical gymnastics and digging up scriptures and proving this and proving that. Too much people dying again to help me to work with that. So if you want to go get off, go, go with these wonderful Bible studies with 10 Bibles open and trying to prove this and prove the other, and you got the book of the Maccabees and the lost book of the Bible and, and, and the book of Enoch and, and, and all them, and you will say, that I ain't got time for that. And I found that most people who consume and doing that, they ain't touching nobody. They too busy trying to be right. I'm consumed trying to please God. And if I, if I go to heaven and find out that I gave 10% of to do that, but because I did that, lives got saved. The church was able to keep open, to stay open and minister. We were able to keep people employed. We were able to get the gospel out. And I found out that my giving did that. That's, that's good for me. That's enough for me. My amen's getting lower and lower. <laughs> I returned the first tenth of my income to God through his church because I love God. Um, take two deep breaths. Think to yourself. And let's make this declaration. Ready? Read. When you don't do this, I don't question your loyalty to church. I question your loyalty to God. When this is a struggle. Now, let me give you another example. I told you that grace is a higher standard. If we go into New Testament giving, New Testament giving, the Bible says at the end of Acts chapter 4, and they laid all at the apostles' feet. Say all. Yeah, all men ain't nothing left out. They gave all, they laid all to the apostles' feet. Ananias and Sapphira died over property, not offering. Over property. Now, the church didn't tell them that they had, this is when you know the Holy Ghost is moving. The church didn't tell them that they had to give the property, no. The, the apostles never demanded these gifts. And when you find yourself having to be convinced to give to the cause of the kingdom, we got to really question what's in you. Any of you ever had to get convinced to buy a gift for the person you're dating? Did anybody have to convince, you know, now you, you know you all been going on for six months. It'll be good if you buy her something. Or worse, if you had to say to them, um, listen, man, you know it's been a year now and Christmas so rich. Can you buy me a gift, please? These laughs scare me. When you love someone, that's just what you do. Nobody got to convince you and coerce you into buying something for the one you love, into giving them something. You love them, so you do it. For God so loved the world that he did what? That's what you do. When you so love, you give. And so when you have a problem giving, I got a problem. I got a problem. And y'all know when y'all y'all was dating, you know you go, what I remember time me and Robert went out to ran out and she wanted McDonald's, and I tell her I wasn't hungry, I was so hungry. I was so hungry. I said, No man, I buy your mouth white. Were you hungry? But but because I dating her. And and she she you know and she want fish fillet or whatever the case is and I only got I only got six dollars so I got and she's like you want some no man eat it enjoy it <laughs> yeah I'll wait to get home. That's a short date night. That, that's short, short, short. I'm hungry. But love compels you to give. 
So when you are not giving, I got to question your love level. Do you really love God? And you're giving your tithe, your, your commitment to God to give him the first. And you stop seeing tithe as 10. I think more important than, uh, than tithe, tithe, the definition is 10. But I think more important than tithe being 10 is tithe being first. More important than it being 10 is it being first. You start conditioning yourself to give that to God first. Then you're tithing. When you are not doing it first, it's no longer a tithe. You just give it an offering. By definition, tithe has to be first. If it's not first, it's not tithe anymore. Because first is more important than tithe, than tenth. Let me end this now. Was that good? What are we on? As far as we get? Let me go through them fast. Let me end here. I will no longer give based on what I see or have, but based on God's promise to prosper me. Now, y'all say that's crazy. I don't give based on what I have. I don't give based on what I see. Um, there were periods in my life, if I gave based on what I had, I wouldn't give nothing. But I give based on what he has promised. And that's why we're hitting you up with all these promises and letting you know how much God can with your prosperity. Because we don't limit our giving based on what we see in front of us. Your Bible says he gives seed to the sower. So we give trust in God and he's going to give me something to give. And I have yet to be in the service when I didn't have anything to give. He always, every time, every single time. Glory to God. Make the declaration ready. Read. Are you receiving this this morning? All right. Number five. I will honor the Lord with my substance. Everything that I have belongs to him. That's a big boy right here. I will honor the Lord with my substance. Everything that I have belongs to him. We talk about giving my offering and giving my tithes, but when you understand this concept, you realize all belongs to him. And that's why we, want, we don't want to get you locked into this whole idea of giving your tent, whatever the case is. It all belongs to God. There will be a Sunday that you sit down in here and you prepare to give your tent. And he says, give it all. And you can call him the devil. And you can call the devil a liar. I was off to school. Off to school. And making $150 a week. Playing for church. And we went out to eat one night. I told a story before. And the Lord told me to give the brother all. I said, devil, I rebuke you. I off to school. I far away. Mommy and daddy ain't here. What are you talking about? Give all. And the Lord said, give all. And I get up by all. And guess what? Guess what the Lord did? After I give them all. Guess what? Nothing. That bug y'all. Because we so give Oh, boy, this could be a sweet testimony. What the Lord did. Nothing. That week I end up getting in my coin collection. Thank God for the coin collection. But it belongs to God. I'm privileged to be connected to him. That he loves me. I'm only a steward. And so the same way he blesses us for nothing, he can take all for nothing. See, we like shout over the fact that he could bless us for nothing. But listen, with that, he also reserves the right to say, give me all. What you can give me? You mean me? I'll give you me. But that's it. Can I go through the next one? Let's go through the next one. Um, did you all say that one? Say it. Number six, I will move from labored living to favored living. Glory to God. All this is from the word we got on Sunday and, and, and Saturday. I will move from labored living to favored living. This is the one way I had to repeat this but ten times to myself. 
Because my mindset is I work, I get paid. I work, I get paid. I work, I get paid. So then to keep on working and you can get paid. That is true, but that ain't favor. That's labored living. He says, I want you to believe me that I'll favor your son. Glory to God. Believe me that I'll bless you before your work. <laughs> it is right there where the Lord reminded me that the man of God spoke that we're about to see debt reduction and debt cancellation. That's favored living. I want to believe God, and I'm believing because I'm one of them. I just want to extend it to you. I'm believing God that along with me and Robin, there will be others that testify by December that your debt was here, and you don't know what happened in the system. You don't know what happened in the computer. You don't know what went down, but for some strange reason, they say, oh, man. Robin and I was talking to Bishop Godfrey Williams, and... Um, he had, um, that's, 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 that's um, these folks, the pastor, uh, he was talking about just last year, I think it was just last year, that he was supposed to pay off his, his, he was trying to get his mortgage paid off, and I think he had another year and change on the mortgage. And when he made a particular payment, they said, you're done, you're finished. Y'all you hear that story? Y'all heard that, right? That was just last year. He called me around April or May. He called me. He said, nephew, you wouldn't believe what God did. To you. you wouldn't believe what God did for me, Lord, nephew. You wouldn't believe it, man. I tell you, when I trust God, God tell me, and I do whatever God say, and look what God did for me, Lord, God. And he told me that story, and I started shouting on the phone. But then I hadn't gotten this word yet, so I didn't really receive it. I celebrated it, but didn't receive it. You can celebrate and don't receive. Some of y'all do it every Sunday. I celebrated him, but didn't receive it. Oh, boy, but I thank God for where I am now. And now when I say that story about my good uncle, things change. Because when he said that, I sowed into his life. I sowed into it, but still didn't have the faith to believe it. But I believe that seed ain't waste, that seed ain't rotten, that seed's still coming alive. And now I call it on that seed now that I sowed into him. Glory be to God that there's about to be some debt reduction. I will to tell you what it's about right now so bad, but you can't handle the truth. But I'm believing I'm not the only one. That Watch this. God said to announce this in this room that some of you, the equity going to go up in your house. <laughs> Glory to God. Your worth about to go up without any help from you. Hallelujah. My God. This happened to me already. One time I went to the bank to make a payment, and they said the payment is already made. I said, well, glory to God. I didn't make it, and I bless God for it. Now, the problem is there's a mindset that says you can't receive it. That ain't going to happen for you. Why not? What do you have to lose by believing You've been believing it for nothing and been getting nothing. Why don't you believe for something big and just believe for it? You ain't getting nothing no how. Why not just extend your faith and believe God for more? Yeah. Pastor Kirk, Kirk Pastor said to me yesterday, I asked him on the phone. He says, now, now, Bishop, he says, now, we are already qualified and we have the, we didn't plan on doing this now, but we have the finances to pay for this, this church and so we, everything is straight. We can be able to do this. He says, but man, I don't know, man. He, he said it like kind of suggestive. He says, but I really believe in God going to pay for this church and we ain't going to have no mortgage. I said, Edward Kirkpatrick, what do you have to lose? What do you have to lose by just believing God to cause this thing to happen debt free? You ain't got nothing, you ain't got nothing to lose. But all, you got, all it can cost you is just a little more faith. All it can cost you is just believing God a little more and then having the nerve to say what you believe. Having the nerve to declare it even though the devil looking at you and saying, I wish you would say you believe God. And you look back at him and say, yes, I do believe God. And I'm going to get this debt free. I ain't going to have no mortgage because the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and he added no sorrow with it. And so I'm going to stand on the word of God. I ain't got the money to pay for it. No, I said that a few weeks ago. I can't afford it. No way. I might as well just believe God for the whole thing. Hallelujah. I believe in God. You're going to finish that house. Totally, Bonamese. I believe in God. Finish it. Six months. Why not? Why not, Chicago? Why not put a time on it? 
Six months. Uh, Easter next year, we can come and pray over it and sprinkle water and thing and like, it's consecrated all over again. Everything finished, you know, the little plants, plant around the little landscape. Because we can believe God, let's believe God for the whole thing. You can't believe God. I heard this man preach one time. Um, um, he, he said that the Lord, the Lord, um, 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 he was believing God. He saw this vision of a church and it's just loaded with glass, loaded with glass, loaded with glass. And he was doing this healing crusade. Lady got healed. And he's believing God for his church. And he said he got the frame up, but he needed the money to buy the glass. And said this, um, this lady called him. He prayed. She was at the service. She got healed. And she said to him, this is Robin, Robert Kayanja, Kayanja somewhere. What's his name? Okay, Angela, I got it right. Yeah, and he says, this lady got healed in the service, and she came there and says, man of God, what can I do for you? It's my, it's my, it's my best accent. My best African accent. What can I do for you? And he said he was so excited because he remembered that he needed the glass for the building. And he said to her, I need glass. I need, my building is covered with glass, and so I need glass. And she says, okay, how much money do you need? And he told her the amount, and she gave him a check for the entire amount for all the glass. Hold on. He went to church. He went there. He was excited about to share with the church. And he says, about to share with the church. And the Lord said to him, why did you only ask for glass? Because he got the glass, but the building still got to finish. He's, God said to him, I sent you someone to finish the building, but you only asked for glass. Oh, man, can I get someone's faith to come alive in here? That you said, you know what, I'm going to believe God for the whole thing. I ain't just believing God for, for oil money. I ain't believing God for gas. I need a new car. I don't just need new mats in my car. God, I'm believing for a whole new car. I ain't believing God to change my windows. I need a new ceiling. I need a new roof. I need new glass. I need some carpet. I want some wooden floor on the ground. I need a new furniture set. I ain't believing God no halfway no more. If I don't believe Believe God. You can't afford the flooring. No how. You can't afford any one of the things that you need. So since you asking God, why not ask him for the whole thing? God, the children want a pool in the backyard. God, I want a pool and I want the pavers walking toward the pool. I want a pool house on the outside with a little shower because I want the chlorine inside my house. So I need a shower on the outside so they can shower before they come inside the house. I need some plants in the front and I want a wall with a gate with a button. Since you're asking, I dare you to ask me what you, what you want. Go ahead and ask me. Boy, listen to me. Do how much time you have. I lay out what I want from God. Because so, since I'm on a faith walk, and faith don't cost me nothing but believing, I might as well just go ahead and believe God. There's a building my eye is on, Nixuma. Cut this part out, um, Kate and Eugene. Don't play this part on TV. The bank moved out of it because it wasn't making no sense. Scotia was there and Scotia moved out. I want life moving. Why not? Just believe God. I could believe God for a church like what daddy used to go to when he was a district superintendent. When daddy was young, in the island, the church was big as that office. Wooden floor. When you shout, the, the, the church shout. When they dance, the whole church started dancing. You see the church, the church bumping? The church bumped, that, and that was what, that, that's what Funsdom was doing. Something wrong if that's the faith that he had, and now I come a generation later with that same kind of faith. So I believe in for my place to have lights and air conditioning and carpet and chairs and screens and all this kind of stuff. That's what I believe in God for. When funds went to the islands, he stayed in people's house. So now I put him on a little room. One time I stayed with him, one time we, we, we was, we was um, in the loose word, Mabel Brown. And me and daddy sleep on one bed there, my God. 
That little house you see in there? That's a well. Hallelujah. When I travel, I, I go to Long Island. I will stay in Cape Santa Maria. When I go to Exuma, I'm going to go to Grand Isle. Why not? No, you, Pastor, you getting all about the money. You getting all about the poverty. You stay all about the poverty. And I can say all about what I want. And let's, let's, let's talk about it when we get to heaven. Because I go in. From Cape Santa Maria. But you go if you won't go. Are we waking up your faith, man? Is your faith starting to wake up? I, I didn't do all. Is one more? Repeat number six. Ready? Go ahead. I want to ask y'all this for real. Do y'all see why this right here is necessary? Going through this. And because I, I, we need now to be brainwashed. That's what we're doing now, trying to wash our brain. And I know I need this, and I believe I'm not the only one in this room that need to go through this and need to recondition our minds, recondition our thinking. Oh, man. I have, I've been in so many places. People testify where they went to buy the house and the house was given to them. I've heard those stories, but I said that can't be us. For some crazy reason, I never received that it could be me. You, you know, and, and this, is, this is why, oh, we out of time. It's 1030. We got to go. <laughs> this is why, I, what I said at the beginning, I hope you don't forget, where you are limited by your level of revelation. Do you believe that we've had two people in this church, two people, well, I don't know, I mean, it's championship you pass, but three people, three people in this church that were facing jail sentences, and they all got off. <laughs> three people in this eight-year history of Life Worship Center who were facing jail time. And um, the three of them, They, they, they could have gone. And we got together and we prayed. After the, after the first time, we were convinced. Well, actually, we shouted for the first one. We were shouting before we even had all the revelation we have now. We say they ain't going to sin. And we cursed it. That person not only didn't go to jail, they recovered two years' salary. Yeah. Yeah. Those of y'all who just joined this church, you better know where you're joining, yeah? You just walk into some blessed ground when you say you're going to join this church. You walk in some favored territory when you walked up in this place, man. Another brother was facing, I think, two years. When he went there, he got a fine for $2,000. They said, hurry, bring it back. His mom went to the courtroom, going to Scotia, pull up that $2,000 and say, see there now. Let my boy go free. Man, but here's the thing. We have faith for that. So any of y'all who got a little jail sentence, talk to me. I got faith, I, and I, I kid you not, I have faith for that. I can believe God. Lord, we on, we on, we on live. People will call me tomorrow. <laughs> Wait, Pastor, my son wants to go to jail. <laughs> we need you, Rev. I have faith for that because I've seen it. We've prayed every single time we've prayed. Now people have, have issues. I don't even stress about it. We got it. I text my lady and says, listen, let's pray this one out. Pray this all out. They can get favor. They can get mercy. They ain't going to jail. We believe in God for favor. We pray that through and that's done. The problem is we had revelation there. That's why we got results there. We are not getting results with regard to our finances because we are lacking revelation. Some of y'all getting mad, say this word today was boring. You came for more than this this morning. We're trying to flush your mind. We're trying to create a new way of thinking on the inside of you. So the same way we believe for healing, the same way we believe for deliverance, we believe for sentences to be reversed, is the way we're going to believe for mortgages to be canceled out. We're going to believe for promotions on the job. We're going to believe that you're going to be living, f not from running out, but running over. And this is going to require reconditioning. 
So I'm taking my time with this. We're on the last one. Last one, we go on. Marshall, let's go. Marshall, I know you love him so much. Let Marshall be part of it. I will no longer accept. Oh, Lord, that's the last one. That's what it is. I will no longer accept running out. I didn't realize it's the last one. I am living in the running over. No caption needed. Glory to God. Make that declaration ready. Read. Shout if you believe that's your portion. Glory to God. Now I'm going to tell you this for what we're going to be teaching. If 10 of y'all show up, we're teaching it with the same fervor. If we run it over like we was last week Sunday, we're teaching it with the same fervor. If you go bring your Kawinas Club and your Rotary Club to church with you, they're going to get this word. If your graduating class will come here for service, they're going to get this word because we're working on something. God has promised some things, and we're getting our mind ready for this. We're staying on this course until the Holy Ghost say move on. We're going to hit this and hit this, and I believe we're going to get the release when we start seeing the overflow. Glory to God. And so we're going to stay on this and stay on this because this is the set time to prosper this people, and we're about to move into that season of sustained abundance. If you receive the word today that God has spoken, come on, clap your hands one more time and bless the Lord. I want to see you on Tuesday. On Tuesday at 6 o'clock for Bible study. And uh, we're going to carry on our teaching. There's so much more that I thought I was going to get. You all up? You all up? There's plenty more. I was hoping to get to that today. I'll get to that on next week. Um, that's now the, the, to kind of go over the teaching from two weeks ago. That's just the, the teaching from Pastor Kirkpatrick. I want us to really chew on that word and resonate that word in our spirit. Um, but we're going to go further on next week with some other things I want you to be um, to get in your spirit. Let's get ready to give. Oh, listen, after I've been hearing these words, I've been so excited about offering. I've been excited about tithing. Um, we have two persons, two, two persons who, who were traveling, one traveling and one was ill. They came, one came to my house this morning and said, Pastor, see my tithe, put it in. I said, yes, sir. This thing catching on. Where you was going to put your seed in the ground because you don't want to miss what God about to do. Someone else called me and said, Pastor, listen, I go on vacation, but I believe something's going to be in the house today, so I don't want to go away and not put my seed in the ground. I believe an anointing going to be in the ground, and I want to get my seed in the ground, in that anointed ground. That's what I'm thanking God is starting to be, is starting to spread like a contagion in this house, and we can all get to that place where we trust God. This ain't about getting money to the church, but getting money to you. God has proven to this church. He got us. He's proven to this pastor. I got you, son. We're going to be a prosperous people. We're going to apply the word of God. Glory to God. Let's get ready to go. Let's get ready to give. We're going to go. We're going to give and go. Any announcement I need to make for Black Tuesday night? You guys have an announcement? Okay, you can put it in the announcement. All right. Come, come on, if you need to tie the envelope, just, just um, raise your hand, and uh, they'll get one to you while they're preparing that. Um, Yasmin is coming with the announcements that she has, and uh, you keep on playing to give her background music. Um, Thank you, Peggy. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm rising this morning to make an announcement on behalf of the General Ladies Auxiliary Department of the Highway Churches of God. I would like you to please set aside this time in your calendar. The 15th of October to the 20th of October is our General Ladies Convention. The theme for this year's convention is When Daughters Travail. When daughters travail. Let me say it again. When daughters travail. This year's convention is focusing on the power of prayer. The power of travailing in prayer. And I'm telling you, you want to make sure that you are there the 15th to the 20th. That is your season when the door will open up for you. When things will shift in your favor. When things are going to begin to turn around. I'm telling you that is the time when you'll be standing under your open heaven and your prayer that you've been sending up over the times and over the times past will be answered when daughters travail and that is for the single woman that is for the married woman that is for the mother that is for the woman in ministry please set that time aside October 15th to the 20th it's going to be held at the Grove Temple Church of God 7.30 p.m. nightly. We have dynamic speakers who are slated to, to uh, 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 expound on the topic of travailing. 
And one thing that I'm excited about is the time set aside for devotion and prayer. We have prayer warriors set aside for that time of intercession and prayer. I'm telling you, you need to be in the house those nights so that someone can join faith with you and help you to cause your prayer to be lifted up just a little bit higher. When daughters travail, something happens. There's, there has to be a shift. There has to be a change. So please lock in that date, the 15th to the 20th of October at the Grove Temple General Ladies Convention. One other event that's going to be attached to that week is on the 20th, that Saturday, is an, act, is an health fair. The health fair is designed to help us to not only make ourselves, a convention, sorry, is not only designed to help make ourselves spiritually ready, but we need to be physically um, healthy as women. So on that Saturday, it's a health fair, and to register for the health fair, it's a minimal fee, a small fee, of only $20. Ladies, I have 50 applications just for Life Worship Center. I am going to give out 50 applications. I am going to receive $20 from each of those 50 applications. That application, um, when you sign up for the health fair, that includes a t-shirt. We're giving out t-shirts for that day. And also breakfast will be served on that Saturday. That Saturday, we're going to begin with a, just a brief walk, a short walk. And then we're going to gather at the Grove Temple for the health fair, blood pressure. What is it? Blood pressure checking, health, all those good stuff will be taking place on that Saturday morning. So please, before you leave, see me, come collect your form. And then, of course, as soon as you have that $20 available, you can see me again. But even more importantly, the 15th to the 20th, the place you need to be is at the Grove Temple Church of God because we will be travailing in prayer that week. We will be travailing in prayer. We, as life, know the power of prayer. We know that things happen when we pray. So please let me see you there on the 15th to the 20th. Anything else? I have the clothes on? Okay, 15th to 20th. Okay, if, okay. Do we have any visitors here with us this morning? If you are visiting life for the first time, please stand. We want to recognize you and we want to celebrate you this morning. Someone is going to make their way near you with a microphone. And when they approach you, please, we'd like for you to give us your name. We'd like for you to tell us what church you are affiliated with and who invited you here today. We'll start with you, Sister Vera. My name is Cassius Gibson. I attend New Beginning Ministry, Pastor Chisholm. I visit there, you know, but I was, on the, I was listening to the radio last week, and I heard the man of God speak. And I was in Castle in prison before, and I noticed the work that he does in prison at the female prison. And I'm the president of the CEO. Okay, I'm the president and CEO of the Caribbean Award Association. So what we usually do, we honor people like your pastor and this ministry. But I didn't say anything to you all this morning. We have you all up on our chat. We honor you all for your service right here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Sister Gia and prison ministry pastor, Denzel Roll. Oh, my God. Life, can we give ourselves? Let's take a little minute and just clap ourselves up. But we want to give God the glory and honor for seeing our work for seeing the work. And sir, we don't do it for recognition. We do it because we have a heart for people. And our desire is to see the glory of the Lord filling this earth as the waters indeed covers the sea. That is our desire. So Sister Gia, God bless you and your ministry. Pastor, thank you for seeing to see her. Continue to do what you're doing. God bless you. God bless you. And sir, we're so glad that you are in the house with us this morning. Sister Vera again. Chanel, did you enjoy our service today? And will you be coming to join us again? Definitely. Tuesday night is our, uh, what is it, meal service. We begin at 6 o'clock. But, oh, sorry, sorry. 6 o'clock, and of course, tomorrow night is prayer. 7 o'clock, we will be here in prayer. Go places and you invite people to church and there's lies. People is lies. So I come to church, but I, and I look at that couple, I said, that looks familiar, but I ain't fine. I'm going to get here. So, she served us on Wednesday. 
Wednesday after our anniversary, we went to her, the place she works at. Uh, I went to her go trying to get no, no discounts from her. Uh, she, works, she works at Green Parish. And, um, and I invited her to church. I said, man, come to church. She said, man, I come. And I said, you lie. She said, no, I, I, said, I, I don't lie. If I say I come in, I come in. And I ain't lie. I was getting ready to go to Green Parish this week. She said, you lie. You say you coming, and you ain't come. <laughs> but she is like, oh, Chanel, it's been so much to see you. Welcome to your new home, yeah? This is your new home. Um, Yasmin, give you one form for the health fair. Let her come. <laughs> if she won't come, I'll pay for her for the health fair. I'll pay for Chanel to come to the health fair. If she won't, Chanel won't come. But I don't know if you can be off it. You probably work in it. You try to get up. But anyway, Jasmine will call you and connect with you. She can get your number and get all your business. Because we will see you next week and the week after and the week after that. All right. And two more weeks after that. Thank you, Sister Janelle. So glad that you're here with us today. And just, I forgot one announcement. Next week, Sunday, um, I got permission from Bishop. Next week, Sunday, the ladies will also have an additional basket here to assist our delegates from Freeport who would like to attend the convention. Anyone who knows anyone from Freeport or knows anything about what's going on in Freeport right now know that times are, are not easy. Times are hard. And they have expressed an, a desire to be in the house of the Lord with us that week. And because they express that desire, we cannot turn our backs on them and tell them no. So next week, Sunday, I will be here with an additional basket, and we're only asking you to set aside at least $1. At least $1. Of course, you can go beyond that, but next week, Sunday, we want to assist all of our sisters from Freeport in getting over here to the convention. Let's stand to our feet as we love on our God through giving, as we love on our God through giving, and as we dismiss. Let's lift up our gifts unto God, and let's just take a few minutes just to bless him, thank him, and honor him for this opportunity that we have to tithe and to sow. Like the minister said, tithing is God's property, but when we sow, we change our situations. We change things in our favor. So we're praying now. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God, for the good gifts that you've extended to your people. And we are so grateful, God, for this opportunity to give. We love on you, Father, the way that you've loved on us. We don't see this there, God, as a task. This doesn't hurt us. This doesn't pain us, God. We come joyously with this gift in our hands to give it back to you. Because your love has been never-ending. Your love has been unfailing. You have been faithful and you have been good to us. And for that, God, we say thank you. Now, Father, we speak there, God, hope and we speak faith and we speak life into those persons who are unable to tithe and sow today. That mother who hasn't gone to the grocery store in a long time, that light bill that has been staring in the face of that family, that family that that's on a generator, we declare in the name of Jesus that their situation will change. That family that needs a car, we declare in the name of Jesus that their situation will begin to, sh to, to change, Father, as they sow this seed of faith. Father God, we thank you for the testimony that will return to this house because we know you are a way-making God. You are a miracle-working Father. And Father, that God, we honor you. Now, God, as we leave this place, God, we thank you that we are walking still in our season of sustained God abundance. We thank you, Father, that, that we are moving from labored living to favored living. Father God, we declare that this week is our set time that this is our set time to prosper as your people. And for that, God, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. Lord God, as we leave this place, we ask that your angels would take charge over our physical bodies, take charge over our minds, and take charge over our spirits. Cause us to, to return back to this house, not only physically whole, but mentally whole and spiritually strong. We thank you, dear God, for the blood of Jesus that's over everything that's connected to us. We declare, God, that Satan cannot touch anything that is connected to us in the name of Jesus. So we clean the blood of Jesus and we declare the blood of Jesus over everyone and everything connected to this church. For that, God, and for these things, we give you the honor, we give you the glory, and we give you the praise. On that, we say thank you. Can we give God a thank you praise as we leave? Can we thank him just one more time?